In the dim, dark past, too long ago to remember, there was no rain, only little pools of water that formed from the dew. Imagine, no rain falling to water the land, no rain falling to fill up the rivers. How dry, how bare, how desolate. But this was not the earth we know. In the beginning, too far back to count in years, there was only the dream time. This was long before the white man came to Australia, and in the dream time, many strange things happened. Do not ask why or how, for it doesn't matter. It was just so. Forget what you know about the earth. Forget what you know about man and animals and all other forms of life. In the dream time, everything was different. The world was flat. The sky pressed down low upon the land, and between the two lay just enough space for an ant to walk. But the tiny little black creatures that roamed about were men, and the tinier creatures, some no bigger than an ant's foot, were the animals. But the animals were the clever ones. If they wanted something, they went to look for it. If they were sick or sore from wounds, they would seek out the pool of tomorrow. For they knew that the magic water of this pool had a power to heal and make them strong. The little people were lazy. They couldn't be bothered looking for anything special, whether they wanted it or not. But one young Aborigine warrior did find the pool of tomorrow. His name was Yondi, and it happened this way. Yondi had been forced to leave his tribe. He had spoken out loud and told his elders, I have grown to manhood, but instead of being something, I'm nothing. I'm young, but instead of being strong, I'm weak. And the elders had sent him far from his own country, lest someone else listen to his silly talk and grow restless. Now, after many days wandering alone across a strange land, Yandi had stumbled upon the pool of tomorrow. Exhausted and parched with thirst, he scooped the cool water to his mouth. It tasted pure and clear, and as he drank long and deep, it made him feel strong inside. It made him feel so good, he jumped right into the pool. The magic water covered him, and as he lay in the coolness, a great strength entered his body. Beneath the water, his hand touched something. He pulled a flat stick from the pool. He felt so strong, he wanted to snap it in two. But the stick had lain in the pool much longer than Yondi, and it stayed in one straight piece. Again, Yondi drank from the pool. Never before had he felt so good. He could do anything. Some tiny animals had gathered about the pool, and he wanted to show them that he had the strength to move a mountain. But when he looked around, he could see no mountain to move. Then he looked up, and he saw the sky hanging low over his head. Gathering his newfound strength, he grasped the stick tight in his hand and stretched his tiny body as tall as he could. Then he pushed the stick up against the low-slung roof of the sky. As he pushed up hard, he felt the sky give a little. With tremendous weight now, he pushed the stick up again, much harder. The sky quivered. With another mighty push, he felt the sky shake. And as it did, the creatures were amazed. Watch me, Yondi shouted to them. Watch me push up the sky. Never before had they seen such a powerful man. As they watched Yondi push, he seemed to grow stronger and bigger before their eyes. Suddenly, the stick bent from all the weight of the sky. It was like a signal for the heavens to give way. The sky shot up, way above, just where you expect to find it today. And for the first time, man stood straight and tall. Then as the sky flew high, it sucked up some of the magic water from the pool of tomorrow. All across the land, the little people gazed in wonder. And like everything else upon the earth, they too pushed themselves up and up and up till they stretched as tall as yonder. A strange thing happened in the sky. The magic water formed into a cloud, and for the first time, rain fell upon the earth. The magic of the pool of tomorrow passed to the gum trees and the spinifex bushes and the native flowers and made each grow up in its own special way. So much rain fell that first time, it filled all the small pools of water until one ran into another and another and made the rivers and the lakes take shape. Finally, the rain stopped. Yondi looked about, then proudly raised his head high and shouted to the sky, Now I am as big and as strong as a young warrior should be. I have done this powerful thing. And the sky answered him and brought forth a rainbow. For the first time, the colors of the rainbow shone from above. 
the rainbow stretched itself until it grew so big it exploded into a thousand pieces. And a thousand pieces of rainbow filled the air, then changed into a thousand different birds. Every living thing on earth stretched to new heights as the sky soared above. This was the end of the beginning. And Yondi, the great and strong young warrior of the Dreamtime, stepped from the pool. As he did, he realized he was still holding the flat stick he had found in the magic water, the stick with which he had pushed up the sky. It had done its job well, but he had no further use for it. With his big, powerful arms, he threw it as far away as he could and turned to go. The stick shot from his hands, flew into space, circled round and dropped back at his feet. Again and again, Yondi tried to throw it away until finally he had to give it up. So he placed it with his spears and walked away. Later he thought he would find some use for the bent stick. And he called his magic stick Boomerang, meaning stick that cannot be thrown away.